Okay, Jennifer, wow, this is fantastic. Wow, wow, <laughs> nice work. I mean, this is just beautiful. Nice job. I, you're a lefty, so you work backwards. Whatever it takes, right? I mean, the craft here is part of, of um, what we're looking at. And I think your craft here is just absolutely impeccable. Um, let me see. You have uh, used a piece of paper. That's fine. I mean, that's whatever. It, like I said, Jennifer, whatever it takes, right? Um, I still have some smears. I cleaned it up after scanning. I, uh, my thought was a letter placement was that the tops of the vertical stems of the lowercase letters okay these aren't necessarily called stems okay these are stems right here but these rounded parts are not called stems. that's a vertical stem right there so so that makes sense to a degree but not on the um some of the other letter forms so and that'll all come through when we take a look at that chart uh from the week one resources um that goes over the ana anatomical parts of the letters um, and the little tip here is study that chart because it is part of the quiz. Um, okay, let me see. Where are we on the lowercase letter? Should touch the X height midline. You are exactly right. However, this is called mean line. M-E-A-N-L-I-N-E. -E. Same thing, though. X height mid, mean line. Um, technically, X height and mean line are something different. X height is the height of the lowercase letters, and the mean line is the line that connects the tops of those. Now, you talk about bringing these portions of these these lowercase letter forms above that mean line and that is really really um, uh, intuitive and the reason i say that is because and what is really amazing here is that you tend to go ahead and say i have some small overshoots jennifer that's exactly what they're called they're called overshoots we learn about overshoot next week in our um, optical relationships lecture but yeah definitely uh you, you you got it man you got it you're exactly correct overshoot what happens is whenever you have a curved uh, letter form you want to overshoot the cap line mean line or baseline a little bit otherwise it looks smaller than uh it, it's it, the, the the its counterparts the other letters around it um we it's a great experiment if you take the uh, a, a circle and a triangle and you take the exact height of the circle and duplicate the triangle to the exact um, height in an equilateral triangle, you put both on the same baseline and the circle's going to look smaller. Again, it's an optical relationship or an optical illusion. And, um, and uh, it, it is definitely part of typography too. So that overshoot is a very, very important part of um, Mecha letter mechanics. Okay, so first of all, why do we want ample letter spacing? The reason we want ample letter spacing is because, or I should say expeditious letter spacing, is because um, you don't want different letters within a word to appear to be in groups, and you don't want any breaks in letters. So for the example I use is if this was an unusual space between the N and the A, the reader would read this as Ben Anna, it would create an unnecessary break, which slows down reading, which slows down retention, which slows down under understanding. And it, it that is why letter spacing and word spacing, and again, par par paragraph formatting is so important to the typographic process. What you have here is outstanding. Your verticals are verticals, your horizontals are horizontal. Right now, this looks like it's a little bit off level right here, that baseline. So you want to make sure your baseline, mean line, cap line are definitely level and perfectly parallel with each other. Um, if we take a look at some of the, the letter forms, we can see that your renderings are beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Nice work. Um, I think that counter spaces for the, I'm sorry, those closed bowls, these areas right here. Um, I think these could be a little bit larger in the, in the B if we, we can kind of see this. These these uh, closed bowls right here just seem a little bit small in comparison. The A's also the A's work on this. You have a little bit, but we really have a, a, a high degree of variation here in this vertical stroke. I'm sorry, this uh, a variable stroke in this part of the A, and then also in this part of the N. And I, like I said, I think you did a really good job. Um, you definitely want it, want those to be visible in your final. Um, I boy, I just don't have much to to say as far as the, the mechanics of the letters and the craft. So one thing I do want to talk about is letter spacing. So this assignment you you did what we call sorry about that. As I was saying, in this assignment you you have done what we call normal letter spacing, right? And that's great. That basically alludes to the fact that each of these have what would be considered to be equal letter spacing. 
In kerning and tracking, especially kerning, what we want to do is we want to follow some simple guidelines. So the, the, the most narrow space between two letter forms is between two curved letter forms. The next would be between a straight and a curve, and the widest would be between a straight and a straight. Now, when I say the narrowest, the next narrowest, and the widest, they shouldn't really be discernible. I mean, you shouldn't be able to look at it and go, wow, that space is wider than that space. The reason we kind of use these measurements and these gauges of, of, of spacing based on the, these shapes of letter forms is to create the appearance or the illusion that the volume between letter forms is, is the same. Okay, so again, try this for your, your final uh, iteration due Sunday. But anyways, what you want to do is you want to establish the closest kerning right here between the two curved letter forms. Then open that up a little bit between the straight and the curve and open it up a little bit more between two straights. The result will be, if you, if you kind of look at this, and you, you, it'll appear as though this, this, this shape here, this counter space between the letters is the same as this one here and the same as this and the same as this. You might have to disregard this, uh, this open counter here in the, the cap, this uh, lowercase a's. But that's the intent, okay? And again, the idea is that we are able to read letter forms, read words, read sentences at a proper and expeditious cadence, and we don't have any un expected interruptions based on unusual letter spacing, word spacing, and or paragraph spacing. Make sense? Okay, Jennifer, great job. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. Great work. Thank you. Um.